you've criticized the famed Putin critic, Alexei Navalny. What's the nature of your criticism? Well, it hasn't really been a kind of a criticism in the way that you know, people have implied, but more just reminding people that Navalny isn't some stooge of the West, as other people have, you know, kind of depicted him in the in the Russian film, but, you know, saying that this is kind of, you know, he's pro-Western. He's, he's a Russian nationalist and a Russian patriot. You know, in the past, uh, he's articulated, you know, things are not sort of dissimilar from some of the people around Putin. And it's more just reminding people that, you know, just because you kind of see somebody you know, as a kind of in an opposition figure or somebody who might be more palatable from, you know, your perspective looking from the West, they're not always going to be, you know, what you think they are. Now, Alexei Navalny is a, is a Russian. Mm. And, you know, in a particular Russian context, he's different from Putin. But he wouldn't necessarily, you know, kind of run, you know, the Russian system in ways that we will like. So that's this is kind of, it's not a kind of a criticism. It's more of a critique of the way that we look at things. You know, I think it's a mistake to always, you know, say, oh, this is pro-Western or this is a, you know, liberal. I mean, what the heck does that mean, pro-Western? I mean, he, he's a Russian. He's a Russian nationalist and a Russian patriot. And he's often, you know, been, you know, quite critical about immigration. Um, he's had some negative views about, you know, at one point, remember, he said, don't feed the Caucasus. You know, kind of played upon some of the, you know, the racial and ethnic tensions inside of, you know, Russia itself as well. Now, he is a pluralist and then he's kind of, and he wants to have, you know, a different uh, set of political actors there, but he also isn't promoting revolution. He's not Lenin. He's not wanting to bring down the state. He, he wants to kind of, you know, change the people who are in charge. That's what he's being basically focused on. And, you know, he might have you know, things and do things that, you know, we elsewhere might not like. And I guess the bigger picture there is, it's not trivial to know that if you place another human in power uh, to replace the current human in power, that things are going to be better. They could be a lot worse because there's a momentum to a system. A system is bigger than just its leader, even when that leader has a huge amount of power. That's absolutely right. And, you know, he grew up in that, you know, same system. Now he's younger than Putin, so he's got a different generational perspective. And he's not wedded to the Soviet Union. Uh, or, you know, kind of some concept of the Russian Empire. He doesn't seem to spend a lot of time, I don't know what he's doing, you know, in jail, but he's probably not sitting around, you know, reading Lomonosov and, you know, the kind of the great kind of tracts of Russian history. Could be, actually. But, I mean, I think, you know, Navalny has a different worldview and a different perspective, just like Medvedev was different, you know, in his time and uh, presidency and made some, you know, changes and some innovations there. But don't think that they're going to be radically different. Because look, Gorbachev, I mean, he was... So different from Andropov and Chinenko and others as a person. But he was also constrained by the system. And he wanted to have change, but he wanted evolutionary change. He didn't know how to do it, but he didn't want to bring the whole system down. Look at Khrushchev when he came in, you know, after that whole period of, you know, everybody trying to figure out what to do after Stalin had died and there was all this kind of back and forth and eventually Khrushchev emerges. And, you know, he tries to make changes to the system, but he's also a creature of uh, a very specific context. He's grown up in the same system and he, you know, kind of brings all kinds of elements of chaos there, you know, to the whole thing. And, you know, gets into a standoff with the United States that, that we know as the Cuban Missile Crisis and eventually, you know, gets removed. You know, we're looking at what's happening in um, the United Kingdom right now. You know, they've just churned through three uh, prime ministers and actually five prime ministers in, you know, kind of as many years. But all of those prime ministers have come out of the context of the Conservative Party. and They're all, you know, kind of just shades of, you know, the same thing. They've all come out of the same academic and, you know, kind of privileged backgrounds. Even uh, Rishi Sunak, the new um, prime minister, is the first, you know, Indian or Anglo-Indian uh, prime minister in, um, in British history. It was a kind of phenomenal, you know, kind of as a child of in, in Indian immigrants, but also... Um, a person of great privilege from the same academic and party background as the others. You know, so there, there, there are always differences with those human beings, but those contexts matter a lot.